If a child has developed a rough feeling, red rash, sore throats and fever, they might have something called scarlet fever. And in this video, we'll cover what it is, who gets it, symptoms, diagnosis, as well as treatment. So what causes scarlet fever? Well, scarlet fever is caused by a tiny germ or bacteria called Streptococcus pyogenes. The germ is sometimes called group A strep. This germ causes quite a few illnesses, including skin infections, chest infections, and infections of the heart. Sometimes the bacteria only cause a sore throat without causing the rash of scarlet fever. This is often just called a strep throat or simple tonsillitis. But in scarlet fever, the Streptococcus bacterium releases toxins that spread through the body. These toxins cause the rash, and if it's not treated, it can cause problems in the kidneys and heart even years later, which we'll cover more in the complications section of this video. So now we know that it's caused by a group A strep infection, well, who does it typically affect? Well, scarlet fever is most common in children aged less than 10 years, with four-year-olds most likely to catch it. In fact, nine out of 10 cases in the UK are in children under 10 years of age. Although adults can get scarlet fever, it's very unusual, but the symptoms and treatment are the same as for children. Now, scarlet fever used to be very common in the 1800s and early 1900s because of overcrowding and poor living conditions. In those days, it was actually the leading cause of death in children, but it got much rarer as general health measures improved. There have been some recent outbreaks in the UK, usually in schools, but antibiotics can now treat scarlet fever very effectively. So what are the symptoms of scarlet fever? Well, there are several key symptoms that you should be aware of. These include a high temperature or fever, a sore throat. A classical finding in scarlet fever is redness of the tongue with tiny white spots. This makes it look like a strawberry, hence the name strawberry tongue, which is pretty typical of scarlet fever. And you're seeing some examples of this on screen here. Now, after a couple of days, the tongue can also swell and look a little bit bigger than usual. Some people call this a beef tongue. You're seeing an example of this on screen here, and hopefully you can appreciate that the tongue looks a little larger than normal. You may also notice a rough feeling rash on the chest, tummy, and cheeks. It feels a little bit like sandpaper, and it usually appears 12 to 48 hours after infection. If the child has got white skin, then the rash can look red, but this may not be the case in individuals with darker skin. By this stage, the combination of a sore throat, a rough feeling rash, and a red tongue makes the diagnosis of scarlet fever quite obvious to doctors. If it's left untreated, the rash and the sore throat will fade over about 10 days, but the skin can sometimes peel, as you get in sunburn, which you can see in this photograph here. So now we know what it looks like, well, how is scarlet fever diagnosed? Well, in general, the diagnosis can be made on the clinical picture. So the child with the high temperature or fever, the sore throat, the red tongue, and the rough feeling red rash on their chest and tummy would point towards a scarlet fever diagnosis, and tests are typically not necessary. Now, if there is any doubt as to the diagnosis, the doctor can take a throat swab. This uses something that looks like a long cotton bud. However, the results will take a few days to come back. So if the scarlet fever is suspected, it's usually best to start antibiotic treatment first. There's also a blood test which can detect the scarlet fever germ, which is the anti-streptolysin teta test, or ASO for short. But the blood test is only positive from about one week and one month after the infection. So it won't tell you if someone has scarlet fever right now, only if they've had it in the past. So what is the treatment for scarlet fever? Well, because it's caused by a bacteria and can cause serious complications without treatment, the best treatment is antibiotics. These do take a little time to get to work, so it's also important to give general treatment to relieve the symptoms in the meantime. The best antibiotic is penicillin. You need to take a long course of penicillin over about 10 days. This is longer than is required for a simple throat or ear infection, and it does require a lot of perseverance and organization to complete the course, and you should complete the full 10-day course. The dose will be worked out according to the age and weight of the child. Now, if the child is allergic to penicillin, then other antibiotics can be considered, such as erythromycin or clarithromycin, and these can be used instead, but again, this will depend on local guidelines. Other things to think about are general treatment of the fever that the child might have. It's generally very important for anyone who's unwell to keep their fluid levels up. Water alone is generally fine, and you can also use things like dilute squash, or in a young child, milk is good too. If the child is distressed by the fever, for example, their limp, drowsy, or whimpering, in addition to seeking medical attention, it's worth trying paracetamol. Things like Calpol can help. 
The paracetamol can bring down the high temperature a little, but it doesn't treat the underlying infection, and this is why antibiotics are so important. You should also consider dressing the child in clothes that are appropriate for the outside or inside temperature. And if you do have any concerns about the child, so they're not tolerating fluids, they look overly drowsy, they have a temperature greater than 38 degrees Celsius or 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit, you should make sure you seek urgent attention from a doctor. So what are the complications or possible complications of scarlet fever? Well, treatment with antibiotics thankfully reduces the chance of complications and they now occur very rarely. However, if they do occur, they can be serious. We can divide complications down into early complications, which occur within days, and later complications, which happen weeks or months after the infection seems to have gone. Early complications include ear infection, throat infection, and you can get a collection of pus in the throat, which would be an abscess, sinus infection, pneumonia, which is a bad infection of the lungs, or meningitis, or sometimes brain abscesses. But again, I'd like to point out that these are rare. Later complications are again rare, but when they do happen, problems start weeks, months, or even years after the infection is cleared. These occur as the result of immune reactions in the tissues. And these may include rheumatic fever, which can damage the heart, and kidney damage, known as glomerulonephritis. This is why it's important to take the full course of antibiotics even if the child seems to be getting better by themselves. Now, in the past, scarlet fever used to be a very serious condition. However, fortunately, nowadays, for most cases, scarlet fever is a mild, self-limiting illness, and most children will recover fully within a week or so, even without treatment. Some people ask, is scarlet fever contagious? And the simple answer is yes. Coughs or sneezes and breathing out the germs can pass it on to others. It can also be passed on by close contact or by sharing towels, baths, clothes or bed linen with an infected child. Typically it takes two to four days to develop symptoms after being infected and because it is contagious and can be spread to other people, you should keep children with scarlet fever off school and away from others for 24 hours after starting antibiotics. Once a person has had scarlet fever, they're very unlikely to get it again. This is because they become immune to the bacteria. However, it is possible to have repeated attacks since there are different types of streptococcal bacteria which can cause the infection. Finally, what about if you're pregnant? Well, thankfully, the reassuring news is that there is no clear evidence that catching scarlet fever when pregnant will put your baby at risk. But if you've got any concerns, please do speak to your doctor. As ever, I hope you enjoyed the video and you learned something new. If you did, please remember to like it, leave me a comment if you've got any thoughts or you'd like to share some information about scarlet fever, perhaps your own personal experience with this, and please do subscribe to the channel for weekly medical education videos if you've not done so already. Please also check out the references and resources that I used to make this video, which can be found in the description box. There's lots more useful evidence-based information contained within these links. Finally, I do have to stress that this has been designed as an educational video, not a clinical advice video. And for legal reasons, please read the full disclaimer in the description box of this video. If you do have any concerns about your child, then please just bring them to see their doctor. As ever, thanks for watching and until next time, bye.